Well, okay, look, wait. I think that there is a difference between a white person and a Caucasian person. You know, like, a white person is just somebody in America whose skin tone just happens to be lighter than yours. They're just trying to get through life like everybody else. They don't treat you any different. Yeah. But a Caucasian person, oh. a Caucasian person knows that the minute that they see you, they're white and you're not. They treat you very different. You know, the ones I'm talking about, the ones that come into our communities on their big white horses and they think that they deserve some sort of merit badge for spending the evening with the help. <laughs> no, I, I'm not saying that all white people are bad. I'm just speaking about the majority of America. <laughs> you know, the ones that keep the good old boy system in place and the ones that give their silent consent to protect their privilege. Mm -hmm. huh. It's pretty much the same I feel about cops. Like, I know that all cops aren't bad, but uh, if you asked me if I trusted a cop that I didn't know before he put that badge on, I would tell you that I hate cops. I'm sorry. <laughs> I wish that I could sit here and make my language plentiful for your ears, but that just wouldn't be true to myself. Every time I see that uniform, I just, I think about all the times that those bastards harassed me. Throw me in the ocean, where my ancestors jumped from the ships because they knew that death was better than bondage. Whether you have a flaming desire to speak out against it, or you have become completely numb to it, the fear of being incarcerated or put six feet under imprisons us mentally, physically, and spiritually every day as a community. And although we have come far, we still have far to go. As prejudice bleeds through the roots of this country. As a young black man experiences and confronts racism for what it is, nothing more than a superiority fantasy. By Nathan James. So uh, one night I'm, I'm driving home uh, from a show and I was in Pittsburgh. So I'm driving home and it's this rustic red Chevy and this guy, I mean, he's literally going like 15 miles per hour in a 35 mile per hour lane. So I stay patient for a few blocks. Naturally, I got tired, so I went around him. And then he decided to speed up. Then he decided to get a little close to my bumper. So I sped up again. <laughs> and then he sped up again. So I made a couple turns and we did this for about four blocks and I'm just going pretty fast now trying to get away from this guy. Then I realized that I'm, that was an undercover cop. And all around me were officers. One approached my car, and um, he pulled me out and threw my face on the ground, put a gun to the back of my head, and he's like, hey, where the heck are you going so fast? And I'm like, in survival mode, hey, sir, um, yeah, if you just look a few blocks down the road, you'll actually see uh, my face on a billboard advertising my show. I'm actually just leaving it right now. I'm a, I'm a teacher and an actor. <laughs> The other one says, bull, but he radios to another car, I guess, and uh, two minutes later, which felt like an eternity, the officer confirms that my story was true.
he helped me off the ground with what I guess he thought was a, a good word of advice. Stay out of trouble. <laughs> and then he informed me that uh, there was another car that looked just like mine and it was reported stolen, but at the time I was driving a 2002 yellow Toyota Corolla and I just wanted to know who in their right mind would risk stealing a 2002 yellow Toyota Corolla, but uh, you know, it's fine. Ah, uh, then there was this other time. Okay, so I had a, a film festival and I knew that I had to look fresh, so I just left H&M just got my hair cut. It's one of them days where you just feeling unstoppable, like the world's on your shoulders. You just, you got this confidence about you. And I'm just walking and then I'm uh, going down to the subway and I see this turnstile and next to the turnstile is uh, three police officers, two white, one black, and there's a sign that says, Random searches. We don't need permission to search your stuff. My head. I'm thinking, yes, you do. But <laughs> it's fine. And uh, I just, I keep walking and <laughs> go back into survival mode. I'm just walking through the turnstile, <laughs> hoping they don't notice me. And they're looking at me. And I'm like, hey. <laughs> And I made it through, unsearched. But I look at these white boys in front of me, and it's like they didn't even notice. And I'm over here, worked in a sweat. But I dug a little deeper, and I just thought, like, when did I start doing this shit? When did I start apologizing for my skin tone, you know, like, Tired. Man, I'm tired. I'm tired of always having to make other people comfortable around me. Like, like, like I'm something grotesque and I'm not. And every single race has their monsters. But white boys aren't being treated like, like they're gonna shoot up an elementary school with an AR-15. And I mean, whether white people want to believe this or not, this stuff happens every single day. And I'm tired of them acting like racism doesn't exist. Racism is not some dragon that lives in the deep hills of the South. Racism is just a bedtime story that America told its kids over and over and over again, and they forgot to wake them up. And this is something that I realize has been embedded in generations of black people. I mean, ever since I was a kid, I, I had to hear before I walked into a store, don't touch shit, don't ask for shit, and don't go in there showing your color. I don't have faith in my country or this justice system. And look, if, if we don't get treated with some respect around here, this country is going to have another civil war on its hands. All I ask is that that I'm treated as a human, like everyone else. Because that's what I am, human.